Cool, so I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a blurb about Kyo. Um, uh, Nati specifically is a face that goes way back. I knew, I've met him before Kyo days. I wouldn't say he's a BFF or anything like that, but I've always seen him in a positive light, and I've always seen him have positive interactions with other people and walk the talk. But essentially what Kyo is about is cannabis analytics. They say that they offer testing of anything cannabis related, from simple potency, cannabinoid, and terpene profiling, to residual solvents and microbials. Uh, services such as mycotoxin, heavy metals, and pesticide testing will soon become a part of our portfolio. So basically what that means is if you've got the dabs or the weed or the whatever, you can now, not for the first time, there are a couple of other oaks who can do this in South Africa, but reliably go to people who do it, but not only do it, because a big problem I see with labs is that they don't speak 420. They don't speak 710. Uh -huh. No, they speak science. Only. This feels like a lab that speaks science, in a 420 centric manner, which helps a lot. Uh, we're going to be joined this evening by Nati and Brenda from Cure, and they're going to be telling us a little bit about the science of it all. And we're going to try and keep things upbeat without getting too grilled and sinking into the couch. How are we doing with these, Alex? Eh? Cool, man. Verdict on the weed so far? <coughs> it's really good. Really good. Cool, man. Amazing. Verdict on I me. Mean, can I cross my legs? <laughs> permission. Hi Brenda, welcome to the show. On the Hi guys. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the cure or about cure? Okay, so um, yeah, we we've been around for the last year and a bit. Uh, it was four of us uh, with a passion for cannabis and all very diverse backgrounds in cannabis. Um, we got together by, um, I guess, a little bit of luck and a little bit of work. And uh, we all saw the same need <clears throat> in the sense that cannabis is available all over, but you don't know the quality of the product you're getting. Um, some of us have been making all sorts of oils and extracts and uh, we're giving it to people, especially in the form of medicine, and you don't know what the patient is taking. So just to ensure plain consistency, safety of use, um, also to know the potency of the bud you're smoking, th there is definitely a need to get to know more about the plant. And what's some of the science involved with the process of testing a bud? What, let's say I send you a bud or a, a, a dab, what happens then? Okay, so for a bud or a dab, you can either just get a high level potency indication. So that gives you the CBD and THC that's present in the bud. So um, we've got a little lightweight uh, potency analyzer that does that for us. That's a quick check. Um, it's not super, super sensitive, um, but it, it gives you a good indication of what you have. Uh, then we get more detail with doing a um, cannabinoid profile that is done by gas chromatography. Um, it is a separation method that actually separates all the cannabinoids from each other and it detects them one by one. And we quantify them um, in reference to certified reference standards. So we know exactly how much of each cannabinoid is in, in your product, whether it's bite, concentrate, edibles, beverages, creams, topicals, you name it. Have you said any surprising results? Um, we, we actually have had some isolates that, that we got that were not as pure as they were sold to be so people import them from the u.s or wherever and um they are sold as 90 to 100 percent pure isolates and then we tested them to be between 70 and 80 percent and so, those are the products yes, from we, we have the actually shop had three shocking results sometimes so that's something okay, from can the I shop. come in there? <laughs> Certainly. 
Yes, Naughty. Hello. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> How's it been there? Um, okay, um, I just, just give me, a, at some stage, I just want an opportunity to go back to Tito's tweet, um, but let's just quickly jump in on the surprising results. So, you, um, we're bearers of good and bad news. I mean, that's that's a thing. So, your, your home grower would come in and you would be expecting a high result. And you often get, like, shockingly low results on THC and CBD. But, but that is fine. But what we find is the high quality of um, extracts and isolates that people actually cook up in the, chicken, uh, in the kitchens. And that's surprising and it's exciting. And we see real craftsmen at work at home. Um, we've seen some fantastic isolates come through, dabs, um, extracts. We've, we've seen full mouth extract hash at like 40%, 48% THC come in. Oh, so there is serious quality out. Um, so I just wanted to jump in there to say that. Um, I think what, yeah, we can carry on. That's encouraging to hear. So I, I, I want to say about Tito's tweet. Uh, so yeah. I want to put it out there to Tito um, that he grows such cuck back that I've actually got a market for him. If you can keep it moldy free, we want really, really low DHC leaves for tea and things like that. So I'll actually test this back for free. Um, for, here, you must just send us a sample. We'll test it for free. So I'm just putting it out there to Tito. <laughs> Tito, if you're watching. <laughs> And, and tell me a little bit about the pricing of these tests. Yeah, we, we tried to keep the pricing reasonable. So it, it wasn't really a benchmark. Some of the bigger labs got into cannabinoid testing um, and they, they came in really, really expensive. So we, we tried to keep it affordable. Our potency test, the straightforward potency test, we can do really affordable. We're running a birthday special. We one year old this month, by the way. And we're running a birthday special where you can do a basic potency test, giving you a good idea of CBD, CBDA, THC, THCA, and Delta 9 THC. Normally, that's 400 Rand. That's 250 Rand at the moment. And then our full cannabinoid profile on the gas chromatograph that Brenda explained earlier. I think, Brenda, that's 975. That's correct, yeah. That's a reasonable There's the pricing, yeah. thanks. But we also ran a 5% discount on that. Too. A terpene profile, also 975. Very, very valuable um, piece of information to have. So, yeah, so we, we, it's, it's important to have your source material. If you, whether you make, whether you make edibles, whether you make cosmetics, whether you make medicine, you need to know what's in your source material, also the, the potency, so that you can calib calibrate right down to your muffin or your little lotion that you put in your skin. It's important, as it is important for the Sapra model out there, it's important for the home baker, or, or home user of cannabis. Um, people need to know that. Yes, and also beyond the, and the home use, um, you get people who actually want to put legal products on the market. So you have to test that the THC is below certain levels. So that is also another uh, another use for it. And then our residual solvents uh, test is um, also 400 Rand. Yes. And yeah, yes, so it's right. also 975. And what sort of things do you pick also up just in your solvent add. tests? Brenda. Sorry, say again? What sort of things do you pick up in the solvent tests and the residuals tests? So if you do, if, if you do a solvent extract, like an ethanol extraction, we can tell you exactly how much residual ethanol is in there. So ethanol is not a dangerous solvent. Those are really dangerous. You actually don't want any of that um, in your product, especially if you're using it for medicine. Something like isopropanol, people also use, use that instead of ethanol because it's much cheaper to get hold of. You can buy it from a pharmacy. Um, acetone, also something that you can get from a hardware store. Not something that you actually want to ingest and and use as a medicine so so the uglies um the nasties those those are the things you want as low levels as possible so it's basically a safety check and naughty has there been anything interesting about the terpene profiles of local tests yeah i mean we we, we find some some abundant terpenes in like our pondo from the eastern cape you know that like like, like typical pondo um 
um, derp. Then we would do something and something like Bazibalo would pop up and we would get down a rabbit hole and Bazibalo is a very valuable derp in cosmetics. So we, we're trying to also stack functions for the farmers and see if there's other incomes to be generated from which is, what, which is basically cuckweed. I mean, we know those guys are not getting 300 rand a kilogram for that anymore. It's floating in little huts in Pondoland, a lot of it. So if we can get some sort of market from turpin extraction, um, that, that excites me. And um, there's a lot of users. I, I'm just using one example there. Um, we know what makes you high. We know what makes us you sleepy. We know um, what you need for exam time. Mm -hmm. Um, we, but we, but everything still. I mean, it's it's exciting. It's new. We learn fresh things every day. And um, Brenda will tell you that um, I'm I'm basically a farmer. But this thing just excites me so much. We're in constant conversation, and I'm sending samples of basically everything because you can literally with that um, gas um, chromatograph, you can literally taste everything. So we can say if there's 10 milligram in a little chocolate, whether that's true. So we can, uh, it's, it's really, really sensitive. I can test leaves on it um, and find very low levels of cannabinoids. So it, it's, a, it's a really valuable tool to have um, available. And once again, I think we're doing it at, a, at a affordable cost, or as affordable as possible. And it's still a, it's still a grudge purchase. Mm -hmm. That's something I always hear about you, is that you are very affordable. Yeah, yeah we, we try to be accessible for everyone. Um, you, you get some labs who are in it for the money, but um, we, we actually want to open up the world of testing and knowledge about the plant to everyone. So you who grow in your backyard for your own private use, you can also know what you're using. And how do I send my home grow to you? Yeah, I was just gonna ask. How do I get it to you guys? Um, Not with the couriers that give us most of the samples, the ones we, we um, get to work with most, is Courier Guy. We've never had any problems with them. Um, Ram, also good. And um, then there are a few others, but generally ODSV, also good. Um, generally, we haven't had any problems with uh, samples being delivered by courier. And it's also because you're sending small amounts. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a high risk consignment. So and, the, it's um, also it, legally oh, okay. the okay, remains legally. that of the, the sender. So it, it never actually exchanges hands. Yeah, so that's important to know that what through that whole process, it's never ever becomes our bud um, so, or, or, or product, right? Through our SOP, right into our uh, safe where we keep it for four weeks or whatever um, the standard is for that product. It's never our bud, it remains the property of the sender. So it's covered under the constitutional right to consume cannabis. Um, so you, you can transport your own bud, you're just not allowed to sell, to sell it. So, so we, we yet. that's just how it, 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 it happens and it, it gets through. So I've got a couple of questions. How much bud do I need to send? Mm. Do I get my bud back? And do you smoke a little bit of every test? <laughs> um, I'll, 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 I'll answer the last one. Um, we, we, we do dispose of it safely, normally by pyrolysis or some way of burning it at a high temperature. And um, that's Brenda's little... Um, um, party most of the time, but um, Brenda, explain the sample sizes, please. Okay, so roughly uh, for, for a bud, uh, we need about one gram per test that you want to do. So if you want to do um, a terpene and a, a cannabinoid profile, then we will need two grams of bud. If you just need one test, then one gram is enough. For oils and concentrates, half a gram per test. Uh, is enough and then um, when we get to edibles and topicals we'll need up to five grams because usually the concentrations are much lower and we need to use more sample to do the preparation to do the testing so there's not a vault of leftover and bud you, and you, you can do, um look we do store it for four weeks um you can get your bud back the, the gc destroys it your sample gets in the process so that's gone um because it gets gasified it, um, brenda explained earlier with a potency test with a near infrared spectrometer 
your boat actually stays intact. So that little bag is then you're welcome to come to Montague, organize a courier to get your little gram of butt back if that's worth it to you. Um, rather, yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to you. You're welcome to get it back. At the, at the shows, we often give it back to people. Um, and um, and the best bite goes into a little banky for our smoke at the end of the day. So, so Nadia, how long does a test take? You say at the shows, do you do live tests while people wait? Uh, the, the NIR is quick. We can do a test in eight minutes on the NIR at a show, even less. It depends on the on your prep time is longer than what the test actually run. The GC, there's some preparation time. I mean, that's a, that's a time is process. That's why that's more expensive. And there's also some a little bit of solvents involved. But on the... the yeah, I, test, yeah. My art can be really quick. Yeah. And are you keeping like a library or like a database of all this info? We do, but we're obviously yes. very, um, very sensitive to that. Yeah. Yes, we are we keeping we everything do. in a... <laughs> <laughs> we, we are keeping a library in place. Um, it is it is confidential. It's, it's only every two. They, um, and so no, we will we'll be onto an automated system soon um, where you can actually log on on your profile and you can go and you see the record of all, all the results that you got previously. So that's quite a nice tool. Um, at the moment, everything is pretty manual still. But we do keep record of all the results. I have a question. <laughs> so, What's the cloud? question here for you? Um, is there like a best stage that you should send your bud at? Like when it's completely done, when it's still budding, like is there a best time for you to test? Wet, dry? Yeah. Okay, um, okay so that question... So it depends on the information you need. Okay, not to okay. Yeah, okay. So that one, um, because I mean, my, my primary interest in, in potency testing was always as a grower. So with this tool at your disposal, you, you can, it, it really depends on your end product, whether you want, um, what do you want to do with that, with that smoke? So if you, if you like a really full, like couch locky strain, you would ripen your butt quite ripe and then test it at that. And you want to see what your degradation of your cannabinoids are. So there's really no best time. It, it, it depends on your product. We really want optimum bud, like at optimum condition. Normally, like 30% of the trichomes turning like really dark amber, 70% um, milky, um, still healthy bud. Um, and then what we find, and uh, I just want to put that out, out there too, people grow excellent bud, but they stuff it up in the drying and curing process. We get really nice bud. We see, yes, see the stuff had a lot of potential. But then we get it in such a bad condition. So that is where I think um, you also need to, to, to decide how you handle your bud. It's really not the time when you taste it. It's how you handle it to get that optimum result. Amazing. What's the strongest bud you've tasted? Um, we've, 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 we've um, not uh, the, the machine. So the machine errors at 32%. So there was one strain that aired the machine twice, and then we got 31 on it, like, um, under it. So that, I don't know, Brenda, no, you had, it was like 30%, 30 like, above 30% yep. the machine. Yeah. All by, yeah. I, yeah, I think it's like 30, 30 so um, just back to the information. So that kind of information, not even the directors of the company is like privy to unless the client decides to share it. So sometimes some clients like us to collaborate with them and discuss their results with them and then we share it amongst us. But that is really an opt-in option. So I don't like go at the end of the week and go through the results and see who's growing the best bud in South Africa. As much <laughs> as I want to do that, it's just the way that you deal with information, unfortunately. Uh, we need to be sensitive around that. Definitely. And where can people find out more about you? Website uh, www.q. Uh, I think. Um, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, oh, Q U R E. Q. Okay. Yeah, we're Great. Q. Yeah. Where 
looking for Brenda there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, guys, thank you very much. Nati, Brenda, wonderful speaking to you. Guys, they've got a great special running. Uh, please, stay lit and tell me, in this week's Zol poll, flowers or dabs? Flowers. <laughs> okay. Flower. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a flower smoker. I smoke joints. So quite a lot of them. Um, yeah. Quite a lot of them. Mm. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nati. Stay lit. Brenda, stay lit. Have a great quarter to Friday. Thank you. So, Buzz, I'm looking here at the YouTube chat and I see Zolbart is here, high school teacher. I see Russ Warren. Clip Corp. Jojo. Yeah, I was gonna say I saw Joe popped in. Big hearts to Joe. Robin from Indigo Girl. <coughs>